Brian Zipsy from Horse Racing Nation. I'm here at the Dale Romans Barn with none other than Dale Romans and the one of the favorites for this year's Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Not this time, smashing winner of the Iroquois. First question, Dale, how's he doing? He's doing super. I didn't like you saying one of. He should be the favorite, huh? He's the favorite on my list. Yeah. Is he the favorite on your list? He's the favorite on my list. That's just literally one of the best horses I've ever been around. One of the best ever. One of the best ever. I thought we said Kitten's Joy was my bar for the best horse, and uh, this horse may pass that bar. That's exciting. It is exciting. He uh, loves what he's doing, as you can tell. He's ready to get out and do some exercise this morning. But he's training super. He came, he's both right. He's just been a machine, a push button horse. And he's got the breeding. Giants Causeway, Miss Macy Sue. You trained his half sister, right? I trained his half sister, Taylor S. She was extremely talented and uh, she had an injury before before she got to show how good she was. And uh, she's now going to be a brood mare. But his brother is a, showed his talent last year in the Breeders' Cup. Liam Smap. Liam Smap. And he's off to a very good start as a stallion. It lanes in. And, I don't think you can get to him this year. This horse has it all. That's uh, you know, you talk about great horses. He's got the pedigree, he's got the look, he's got the mind, and he's got the talent. And it's probably the first horse you can put all those things together without really a flaw that uh, that I've had had a chance to be the real super horse. So you knew early on what you had here. Well, we knew. You know, four horses came in off the van. He's a homebred, so I hadn't seen him as a baby. We didn't buy him out of the sale. Right. And when he got off the van, there were four really good horses. All balls have been stepped it up and have bought some expensive, very nice stock for me to work with. But after about two weeks of being here, you could tell he's doing things that the, the Giants don't do that young. And, you know, Brody's Cause was a great horse last year, taking the Kentucky Derby, and he was showing similar characteristics as a as a Giants Causeway. But this horse seems to do things just a little bit easier. Now he, the first race out, he had some bad luck, didn't run his race. What do you think happened there as opposed to? Yeah, bad training. You know, I'm not much of a first time starter trainer. I don't uh, crank them up to jump out of the gate five in front and go as fast as they can early. I think that that's detrimental to the long range career. That I'd really see him fall, fall out of there, sit and get some dirt in his face and come running. With that being said, I thought he could do that and still circle the field and win. But if you watch the gallop out, I mean, he went through a little hole late, galloped out strong, and that was a key race. There were good horses in there. Bay you man and one at Saratoga? Yeah, so you know, he's a great state horse at Saratoga. You can't spot a couple of links going five and a half furlongs, where it was. But when we came back, Robbie, I had told him to panic. I said, it's going to be as good a horse as you've ever set on. When I came back, he said, you know what? He ran fifth, but you're right. And we stuck with him, and the next out was just phenomenal. We got a mile race written at Tunnels Park and to set him up for the Iroquois. And Robbie called me driving home that night. He said two other horses giving him that kind of feeling. It was mine, Shaft, and Curly. Not bad company. Not bad company. He won that main race by 10 lengths, and then he came to Churchill Downs, back to Churchill Downs for the Iroquois. Broke a little bad in the slot. Well, you know what? I don't think it was his fault as much as this last horse at the gate is always up against another break. And he was the last one to load, especially a two year old, and he just kind of crow hopped over there. And, you know, it was it made me nervous a little bit at first, but by the first turn, you could tell that Robbie had everything under control. And starting in the second turn, he started just engulfing horses, and I thought that was uh, super, super impressive. Give me chills to watch him circle around him at the head of the lane and, and just open up down the stretch of Churchill. Easy as could be. I started picturing uh, people in the infield and 150,000 people watching as he did that. So let's t start talking Kentucky Derby. I mean, Never too early, right? It's never too early to talk <coughs> Derby, right. and you've come, you've come close. I mean, you're a Louisville guy. You've come, Doolahan, Patio Prado, Shackleford. Shackleford took the lead at the eighth pole. I tell everybody, at least I know what it feels like to think you're going to win a Derby. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know that's the, that's a special day for for racing all over the world. You know they tune in for that day. Breeders' Cup is great, and it's and it's, and, and it's building, but it's still not the Kentucky Derby. And maybe I'm biased, as you say, being a little villain, but sure like for this horse to make it there. There's a lot of steps along the way. Breeders' Cup's next, so going to coach mode. We're not looking past the next race, but, but we are. Right. And <clears throat> this is the type of horse that could win it for us. Tampa Bay, probably? Uh... I don't know. You know, we've t taken several different routes in. Last year we took Tampa with, uh, with Brody, thinking that, you know, as a deep closer, it would be a better racetrack for him than Gulfstream. Well, they didn't work out very well. He didn't run very good at all, but he came back and, and back to the, up his talent, winning the bluegrass. 
I don't know that you know with these these types of horses. I tell everybody we train and we set a pattern for weekends, not races, because it seems like all the big three o races are on the same weekends, and we'll figure out where we want to go. Yeah. Th this horse is a little different. He's so talented. He's so versatile. You don't have to duck a racetrack or a horse. I don't think. With him. So you can see us just staying and taking the path through Florida to get there, and not okay. having to shift. And we'll thought, figure that out as we go. Good. Any thoughts on uh, getting out to Santa Anita? Are you going to get out there the week of or a little uh, earlier? Got to start thinking about that. Uh, you know, I got another nice colt and a good filly that uh, could potentially end up out there. So I'm going to wait and see how they run in the maturity and and, uh, and and then the filly race over in the turf, two-year-old filly race at Turf at Keeneland. And then we'll figure out where to go and when to go. He's got you by the sleeve, then. He took me, bit my hand off. <laughs> Not my sleeve. My hand's gone. Well, it was certainly good visiting with you and not this time. We well, you're going to stay around and watch him train, right? I want everybody We're... to see him on the racetrack and see what I see. Absolutely. Good luck in the Breeders' Cup. Good Thank luck you, in the buddy. Derby. I'm on the trail to Kentucky. <laughs>